Ready to Love Season 5, Episode 9. And let's get right into it, y'all. And be sure to check out my Put a Ring on It uh, video as well. At the end of this video, I will leave a, a picture link that you can click on and watch my uh, Put a Ring on It video. I probably won't get that up to later on in the day. But um, be sure to look out for it because there was a whole lot of shenanigans going on in that show, too. Um, this was the this was the, the getaway weekend for everybody. It should have been couples weekend, actually, because the way this show really should work is by now everybody should be paired up and coupled up and they should be on a couples weekend retreat. This shouldn't be still people trying to run around and find connections. But there was one couple that paired up like an old married couple and that was uh, Joy and Clifton. So Clifton was the first person to arrive. You know he gonna arrive and get there early to stake out a room and so was the kid. You know she gonna be on point and on time as well. They the first ones that showed up and then all of a sudden Joy wasn't too far behind because you know she, you know, Joy and Clifton was probably on the phone talking all the way up, talking about coordinating. Where are you? How far away are you? I'm five minutes. I'm 10 minutes. You know, they was talking, texting, and coordinating on their Bluetooth uh, headset while they was driving up to that little retreat. Soon as Joy found out what room Clifton was staying, she went right in there and put her bag on that bed. She was like, I'm flexing on all these women. I'm letting them know I'm, I'm the married woman. Joy has claimed Clifton and she doesn't care what people say about it. But you know what? The kid was sure was salty. The kid said that put her in a bad mood. I know she is in a bad mood, but I don't know why she didn't see it coming. We all saw it coming. I don't know why she didn't read between the lines. Clifton has just been using the kid. Now, he may like her. He thinks she's a nice person and all those types of things. So he's not using her to that extent. But he knows darn well that the gap between Joy and the Kia was very wide. It is not a close race, and he knows it. Even so, when Sabrina arrives, he starts talking to Clifton, talking about, did you know um, somebody's bag is on your bed? And Clifton's up there sweating. He don't want to answer the questions. He don't want to do it head on. That's why I don't like this show uh, that much for this part of the show. Because at this point, Clifton and Joy shouldn't have to be ducking and diving and acting like they really don't like each other. This is ridiculous. This is ready to love, but they got to hide they love. This is crazy. So Clifton and Joy end up packing onesies and everything. They entertain these folks like it's their house and these other people are their guests. It's almost like they had a little, they had a little vacation rental and they invited all their friends up. They act like they hosting the whole party. They got their onesies on. They entertaining people. I'm telling you, they acting like an old married couple. Clifton is like when he waked up, when he woke up to joy the next morning, it was like Christmas with presents under the tree. I don't know. Y'all think they did the wild thing that night? Hmm. I, they might have. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, the kid decides she's going to try to talk to Clifton about it, but she says she don't want to bring it up head on. She wants to see if he's going to bring it up and talk about it and start talking about the obvious. And they sitting outside drinking some coffee, some tea, and Clifton don't say ne'er a word about it. His mouth is shut. And the kid's like, this is a doggone shame. He ain't going to mention the elephant in the room. Uh-uh, the kid, he's not going to mention the elephant in the room. But if you see it, why don't you just call it out? But Clifton ain't going to say a doggone thing because Clifton ain't trying to go home. He ain't trying to get the kid so mad at him that the, the kid puts him up for elimination that day. The, Clifton knows what he's doing. Joy tries to have a little serious conversation with Clifton as well. Talking about, you know, are you going to claim me 100 percent? Are you going to tell me without a doubt I'm your number one or I'm the one? And Clifton said, no, I'm going to ride this game all the way to the end. But I don't think he meant no harm on Joy. He's just telling Joy, uh, we can't let this facade down yet. We ain't there yet. Uh, we got to keep this charade up. We got to keep the charade going that we're really interested in other people. So Joy ready to end the game. And Clifton's like, uh, uh we got to keep this going. Everybody wondering where Tina is. And Joy is like, Tina, why are y'all worried about Tina? Telling the women, why are you worried about Tina? Tina ain't your connection. I heard that, Joy. Joy said, I'm in this to win. I ain't worried about no women that can't show up. Tina talking about she couldn't show up because she had car trouble. Car trouble in 2022? Uh-uh, girl. Car trouble. That's like saying the dog ate my homework. That's like saying, girl, I can't make it. I got cramps. Because you know when you say you got cramps, people, people, people leave you alone. They're like, oh, I understand. You ain't got to do nothing, girl. Shoot, tell your husband, your boyfriend, your friend, anybody you got cramps, and they don't expect shit from you. I'm sure what happened to Tina is she couldn't find no babysitter for that baby. The baby only two years old. Who, wanna, who can keep the baby over for the whole weekend? She couldn't find no babysitter. Probably that baby daddy. It probably was his weekend and he didn't show up and get the baby. That's probably what threw Tina off. Poor Tori. He's still running around here be, be, behind Sabrina. I told you uh, Sabrina done downgraded Tori. Originally, Tori was going to be the F-boy for Sabrina, but she done downgraded him now. And this episode, she puts him all the way in the friend zone. Poor Tori. He just don't get it. He running around trying to talk to Demetrius. 
trying to pick Demetrius' brain to find out what, what Demetrius and, and Sabrina are talking about. It's like the ex-boyfriend calling up your new boyfriend talking about what do you do for her that I couldn't do. Tori, this is pathetic. At this point in time, Tori is looking real pathetic. He talking about I gave Sabrina a lot of space. Gave her a lot of space. You didn't give her anything. She took it. She fired you. I don't understand why Tori don't get this. After Sabrina fired him, he said he feels like a duck, duck goose and it ain't no chair for him, no friends for him. You right about that, Tori. You haven't had a friend for a couple of episodes, to be honest with you. I'm surprised you're still here. Sabrina is like, next. Now Sabrina realized she better concentrate on Demetrius and Donovan, but you know what? That's getting shaky too. She ended up having her next round of interviews. Like I said, Sabrina know how to interview a man. She sat Donovan down. She's like, come on over here. Let me interview you for this job. She says, Donovan, what are you looking for in an employment? I mean, what are you looking... Oh, I'm sorry. Not in employment. What are you looking for in a partner? And Donovan was like, I, I don't want anything stagnant. I want a partner who's going to grow with me. I want a partner who's going to have my back. You know, the one thing about when you talk to a person who's freshly out of a relationship, everything they ask for, you know, it's because the other partner was none of that. It's so fresh that all they know they want is exactly what that other person wasn't. So I am with Sabrina and that Donovan is way too soon out of a relationship. Find out he only been out three months. You know, Sabrina going to get to the bottom of it. But you know what? Donovan did not like these questions at all because he felt the judgment of Sabrina. And Sabrina was judging him from the bottom up to the flow up. And I'm not saying that some of the conclusions she was coming to was wrong. But the way she was interviewing him, I know he definitely felt judged. And he didn't like it one bit. You can look at the look on his face. He was turned all the way off. That's why he was later on trying to call up Tina. Talking about, Tina, where are you? Tina, where are you? Because <laughs> he already knew his connection with Sabrina was falling apart. Sabrina said, you know, she thinks Donovan just wants to play, just wants to play the field. He definitely want to play this game. You know, uh, his friend Phil schooled him on everything and he was, he came in at the last minute. So you're right. Does a man who just got out of a marriage want to hop right back into another marriage? Probably not. So Sabrina, you know, she probably doing her little calculations in her head. And she figured out, dang, Tori's out. Donovan ain't real an option. Um, you know, I guess maybe I got to go on back to Demetrius, the one who wants a woman who's submissive. And she knows she's not nowhere near submissive. So I don't know what Sabrina going to do. She went, she went over and sat next to Demetrius talking about, I can't tell if you like me or not. And Demetrius like, what you mean you can't tell if, if, if I like you or not? That's a problem. And the reason why Sabrina can't tell is because she likes a guy who really chases after her. And Demetrius ain't doing that at all. She like, she can't stand that with Demetrius. He act like he's too cool for school. She don't don't like it one bit I, and I don't I ain't mad at you Sabrina I would want a man to chase me too but the problem is Demetrius you was running around here trying to play three or four and five different men and as a result Demetrius says I ain't running up after you like that absolutely not and that's what Sabrina didn't get about it I know that's how the game is supposed to work and that's why this game doesn't work because the truth of the matter is when a man sees a woman running up after five and six different men or a bunch of men, a lot of men don't want to get wrapped up in that. They really don't. And Demetrius, with his so-called uh, personality, when he wants a submissive wife, I can tell you, mm -mm, he don't like that. He likes a clear field. He may, he, If he has a clear field, he may chase you then, but he ain't going to be wading in between men. I can tell you, I can tell who Demetrius is. But S Sabrina's tired of it. She's figuring out now that her little game plan that she has, it was a big flop. And the villainous, and the villainous Carmen up here, she came, she came to the event with her fur coat. She said, I'm coming here to slay. You know, I'm going to wear my money on my back. And she's up here trying to figure out who her connections are. She tries to rumble all over to Paul, but uh, she gets the cold shoulder from Paul because you know what? I think Paul has chosen sides in that whole Eric Dakia thing and he chose Dakia and he don't like the games that Carmen is playing and I think Paul is turned off by Carmen and he sat there and ate his salad and was like mm, I'm not really all that interested in you no more and Carmen felt it so she moses on over to Donovan and Donovan was like you know what rubbing on her leg and she goes this is what I like I like a man rubbing on my leg she liking the energy from Donovan Donovan saying He's liking the energy from Carmen because Carmen is positive as opposed to um, Sabrina who's interviewing him and bringing up all his negative points. <laughs> Donovan like, I don't want to be put down. I want to be uplifted. And he's liking what Carmen is saying. But like I said in my previous though, Carmen just want to win. She want to win something. Whether it's a man or whether it's to beat a woman out, it doesn't matter. She just wants to win. And poor the kid looking like a puppy dog all weekend. You know, uh, finally, Paul says, well, let me make my move on the kid because he I think he done figured out he don't really like Carmen and he's figured out t Tina is a ghost. Tina ain't interested in nobody up in here because she got too much baby daddy drama. 
and everything else going on, car trouble. Okay. Paul laid it on thick and told the kids she is a powerful black woman and any man that doesn't see that is something wrong with him. And you know what? He was really saying some sweet words to Kia and really uplifting her. And I do appreciate that so much so that the kid even started crying. And the kid said that she was happy that he noticed that because most people tell the kid she's cold. And when the kid when, when the kid said that, it, a light went off in my head. And I said, maybe that's what it is. Maybe in the past, so many people have told the kid that she was cold and probably too businesslike. And she moved the needle all the way to the other end where now she's Miss Overly Friendly. Because all these compliments and hugs, I used to say, I don't know, it's just too much. But it does make sense that if in the past people told her she was cold, she's tried to make an adjustment. And now the adjustment is an overcorrection way on the other end because I don't get cold from the key at all. So the fact that people used to think she was cold, I don't know, that tells me something. I think she's trying to correct an old uh, behavior pattern and I think she has overcorrected. Paul said he would have made a move on Takia earlier, but so many people had their eyes on Takia. Uh-uh, that's not what it is. Takia had her eyes on too many other men. Takia was so busy running around after other men um, that if she didn't look at Paul, maybe Paul didn't see a clear lane for him because Takia was all over all these other places chasing men. I don't know. And I don't even know if Paul is really sincere right now because I don't know, maybe he's just trying to stay on the show and he figures the kid ain't got a man. I might want to go cozy up to her so we both, don't, so I don't get kicked off. I don't know. I don't know what Paul is thinking because if Paul really liked the kid, then he would have shot his shot early in the show. Paul ain't no weak minded man. He ain't lacking confidence. So he would have still gone after the kid if he liked the kid. I don't know. I think this is a ploy for him to stay on the show at this time. But you know what? It's good. If you can uplift the kid when she's down and give her some nice words of encouragement and some sweetness, I'm all for it. Because the kid does need a friend. She's been through a lot. In the end, the bottom's end of being Tori and Paul. Sabrina's going to be the one to deliver the bad news. So I don't know if that if that's good for Tori or good or bad for Tori. Because I'm like, damn, they gonna make, are they going to make Sabrina eliminate Tori? Dang, so he done gone from F-boy to friend to now she's going to deliver the bad news of elimination. I tell you, Sabrina's all, she the boardroom. She know how to fire a person. So I don't know if that means uh, who's going to go home, but we'll see next week. But okay. you should see the put a ring link after this video. Be sure to click on it and watch that video. Talk to you later. Bye.